Good afternoon, girls. Oh, gosh. Sorry, I'm a minute late. Um, I'm such a short ass. I had to go and grab a cushion to sit on so that my face is in the right place on the camera. So, um, <laughs> um, so if you're listening to this live, um, then amazing. Um, hopefully I'll see a few of you pop up in a second. If you're listening to this on the replay, then just pop a comment on and just put hashtag replay just so that I know that you're watching this on replay. Um, if you've got any questions as I go through this live, then again, just pop those in the comments. And if you're listening on replay, then I'll come back and respond to those comments as soon as I see them. Um, but really what I wanted to do today was to talk to you about some of the practical elements of banking. Now, for those of you that don't know me, I've worked in banking for, or had worked in banking for 16 years. So um, since I was 18, actually, I was studying for my A-levels and kind of fell into banking as most people do in this industry. Um, and then I came out of the banking industry in 2016. So I've had years of experience with opening accounts, um, dealing with all the challenges of switching accounts, and also looking at some of the reasons why we should be reviewing who we bank with. So, <coughs> excuse me. The reason I wanted to do this Facebook Live was because back in April I published a blog which has to date been my most successful um, blog and that was on is this the best bank account ever and what I was referring to was my own personal story about how I switched my bank from HSBC to Starlin Bank and some of the reasons why I did that and also some of the benefits that that gave me in terms of my money habits and my relationship with money. So. Um, in terms of my decisions to switch, there was a couple of reasons why I wanted to switch banks. Firstly was I was really, really frustrated with a number of passwords that I needed to access my online bank. You know, I really wanted to get a better, hand, better handle of where my money was going each month so that I could have a better relationship with money. But I found it hugely frustrating that I needed like two or three separate passwords. So that was one frustration for me. And the second thing is, it's I was going traveling in to go and visit my twin brother in Australia. And I wanted to have a facility to use my card abroad without paying high charges. So I started to read up on what they call the online challenger banks. Hiya, Karen. And the online challenger banks are, they're basically a really innovative, appro innovative approach to challenging the status quo of high street banks. Um, now, Starlin Bank was launched by a CEO called Anne Bowden. And Anne Bowden, if you follow her on Twitter, she has this amazing ability to be able to talk specifically to women around how we should be managing money. And, you know, historically, it was generally speaking the men that used to control the, the, the financial purse in the household. But we're seeing much more emergence now of women having control over the financial purse. And what Anne Bowden talks about is how the language in financial services is so male dominated. And this is something I feel really passionately about because I've worked in financial services for 17 years and been surrounded by 55 year old men in suits. Um, and what the, what the whole concept of Starlin Bank was to launch an online bank that threw innovation into technology and also to improve people's relationships with money. So I'm just going to talk you through on the Facebook Live today some of the benefits of Starlin Bank and they're not the only online bank. There's another one who launched actually at a very similar time to Starlin Bank called Monzo and actually the CEO of Monzo and the CEO of Starlin Bank used to work together and then they their relationship broke up and they then formed different banks and now they actually work across the road from each other which is quite funny in London. Um, so in terms of key benefits of Starlin Bank, so for me, when I switched my bank, um, the first thing that I did is I opened up their app and I literally opened my account within 30 seconds. So I took a photograph of myself. I did a video clip of my, um, my voice just saying, hi, this is Catherine. This is my, this is my new bank. Um, and then instantly my account was open. So from a, from a technology perspective, they use like facial recognition. Um, it was just really simple, really, really easy. Once my account was open, I had an instant sort code, instant account number, and I was able to click into their switcher service. Now, so for those of you that have used the switcher service before, there were some new regulations that came out a few years ago, which guarantee that banks have to switch your banking within seven days. Um, and a switcher service basically enables you to, to give authority to, that, to your new bank to contact your existing bank and move over all of your standing order 
standing orders, direct debits, um, salaries and, and details like that. So it's a really, really easy way of moving banks. And a lot of people um, still aren't aware of the switcher service. So people are like, oh, it's going to be such a challenge to move all my direct debits and standing orders open. So that f feature and facility is available through Starling Bank. The only, th the only um, account that it's not currently available on is the joint account facility. They've just la launched a joint account, but they haven't launched the switcher service. They're launching that, I believe, next month. I spoke to them on Twitter about it yesterday. Um, so in terms of opening process, really, really straightforward. Um, the other thing I like about Starling is that when you get your app, they have something called a goal section. So for those of you that have been in the group for a little while, you'll see a couple of photographs that I've posted on there about some of the goals that I've created. And this is where I think there's a massive difference between the online high street banks and the likes of Starling Bank. So I can go into my a goals section in my app. It's literally in the bottom right hand corner of my app. And I can create myself unlimited number of goals. Um, now, this is really important, I think, from a money relationship perspective, because for me, I'm a really emotional spender. So I don't naturally plan with where my money is going every month. Um, I do now, but I, I didn't in the past. So I have to make sure that I can visually and easily see where my money's going each month. So I've created these goals um, for planned expenses and unexpected planned ex uh, unexpected um, expenses. So let me give you a few examples. So planned expenditures are things that you know are going to happen. So you know it's things like Christmas, kids' birthdays, um, holidays each year, your car MOT that you have to have every year. All of those things I've created as separate individual goals on my app. And then I've set up a standing order. I've worked out how much those things are going to cost, divided it by 12, and then set up a standing order to go into that pot. And it, they're all little separate savings pots um, every single month. So I know that I've accounted for all of my expected costs for the next 12 months. The other thing it enables me to do is to create an emergency fund. So what I would call the unexpected costs. So this is the thing that causes the most amount of financial stress for people. You know, when your car breaks down, your washing machine breaks down, um, you have, there's a storm and your fence panels, you know, come down. These kind of expenses that people don't necessarily account for cause the most amount of financial stress. And I'm all for financial well-being. I very much believe that people should try and account for these in their financial budget so that they don't have those stresses. So I use my goal planning app for that every month, just as and when I can, really, I just sift money into my emergency fund. Um, and then I know that if something happens, I've got a backup plan. I've got a cushion behind me where I can access that money if I need to. Hiya, Ellie. Hi, Beck. Um, so what else is there? So um, Starling Bank um, also have what they call a cate like category section on the app. So um, they will automatically categorise where my money is being spent every single month. So I can go into my categories and I can see month by month, category by category, what I'm spending my money on. And this was quite a important factor for me because I'm an emotional spender. I wanted to be able to gain some greater insight into where my money was being spent so that I could then start to think about, well, first of all, does that spending align to my values and things that are important to me in my life? Or am I just you know, out of control with my spending? Am I just spending stuff willy nilly that actually isn't gonna add any value to my life? Um, so the categories bit for me was really interesting. It was a real eye opener into actually what am I spending my money on? So that's another really good thing that I like about the app. Um, there's some like clever little things on there. So there's a pay section, obviously, if you want to set up payments to go automatically or manually to friends and family and bill payments, etc. You can add like little photos on there. So that's, that can be quite amusing. Um, you can put a photograph on for yourself on your profile. And there's loads of really kind of cool visual things that you can do. And, and again, I'm quite a visual person. So if you, you know, if you struggle with aligning goals with your money, which a lot of people do, there's a lot of statistic research to show that if you visualize a goal, it gives you more accountability and it's more likely that you'll see that goal through 
than you know than if, if it's just in your head for example so actually writing it down and committing a picture to that goal which is what I do on my app um, can just incentivize you encourage you to do that um, what else I'm just looking up at my tick list on the wall here I've got just to make sure I don't miss anything in terms of like um, features on the account obviously it is a bank it's fully protected by the financial services compensation scheme like your high street bank would be so from a security perspective if you're thinking it's an online bank how does that work um, you're fully protected under the compensation scheme which currently is £85,000 per person per institution so if you've got a single account on there and Starling Bank tomorrow goes bust then the financial services compensation scheme will kick in and pay you your money back up to £85,000 within seven days. So there's no kind of um, no need necessarily to be concerned about that. Um, you do earn interest on the account. So you earn half a percent interest on balances up to £2,000 and then 0.25% from balances from two to £85,000. Um, you do also earn interest on the savings accounts on the, the little gold pots that I was talking to you about as well and you can instantly access any of those accounts at any time by just pinging money back and forth between the accounts um, you can also have a joint account so as I explained earlier they just opened up this new option to open a joint account um, and they've also just launched Starling for Business so they launched a limited company business account a few months ago and then last month they released an account for sole traders. Now, for those of you that are listening that are in business, um, the Starling banking accounts are completely free of charge. So, you know, their whole proposition is centered around customer experience and customer innovation. They don't believe in paying charges on your business account. So I know a few of you watching have already switched your banking over to them, but um, that would be something to consider if you want to review the benefits that you're receiving from your existing bank. Um, with Starling, they have something called Starling Community, which enables you to keep up to date with all the innovation changes that are going on and actually have your say on them. Um, I was having a little uh, look on, online this morning, actually, about some of the, the um, exciting stuff that's coming up for Starling Bank. And at the moment, they have something called Starling Marketplace. So if you go into your app, you go into a feature called Marketplace and within Marketplace, you've got other companies that are tagged into Starling Bank. So they're like third party fintech partners. So, for example, you have companies on there like um, Habito, which is an online mortgage broking service, or you have companies like Flux and Tail, which are like receipt based companies where you can scan your receipt in and, and have a storage facility. Um, Oh, I think I just dropped out there for a second. Um, so the, these um, other companies, so Starling are recognising that they're not an expert in everything financial. They want to be an expert for, for banks, you know, for, for banking services. So they, they allow other expert companies to plug in to your account. And they do that via what they call an API, which is basically a really technical word for you giving a third party authority to gain access to your data um, so that they can provide services that are unique and personalized to you. So for example, um, I plug in through my Starling Bank app to a company called Emma and a company called Plum. And those two um, API third party apps track my spending on my account and then automate my savings so they will kind of look through my spending and then they'll facebook message me because it's like a little facebook bot that comes on to say today we're going to put six pound 24 into your plum savings account or into your emma savings account and they'll do that automatically for me they'll tell me what they're doing so i can decide to stop that savings automated transaction or carry on but it just automates some savings for me and you know by drip feeding a little bit of money out of my account every every couple of days that I don't really notice it's amazing the amount that you can build up without really noticing any any money disappearing so um, there's lots of apps like that that can plug into your Starling bank account that you can choose whether you give access to or not um, what else any question have you got any questions guys so far for, for those of you that are on live so Karen Ellie and Beck uh, if you've got any questions just pop them down in the comments box below 
Um, the other thing I was going to talk to you about was, so I've talked about the business accounts. Yeah, we talked about the fee. So in terms of um, using your card abroad, Starling Bank don't charge any transaction fees whatsoever. So when I went to Australia in January, I bought a couple of bits and pieces and I didn't have any transaction charges whatsoever. So that was a really good benefit for me of not, you know, not having charges on there. Um, what else is on my list? Yeah, that's pretty much it. I've pretty much covered most of those. So the, the, the key things for me is, is it's easy to open, it's easy to navigate. It enables you to look at categorizing your spending and setting up goals and visual goals that enable you to track, you know, expected and unexpected spends. So those would be the key features for me of the reason why I chose Starling Bank. Um, and then from a business perspective, you know, it's free banking. Um, they, they are in the future, they've got on the cards coming up very soon, um, affiliations with other business experts. So for example, if, you've, if you're currently banking with somebody where you can plug in things like Xero software, um, then that is coming on the card. So keep an eye out for that in the Starling community if that's something that interests you. And I'll kind of pop some messages um, on the group um, as they come up. Hi, Ellie. Um, so yeah, so that's been my experience of Starling Bank. So if you've got any questions at all to do with banks, compensation schemes, switching banks, um, managing money, categorising spending, budgeting, anything like that, then just send me some questions, pop them on the comments box below, or send me a personal message and I'll come back to you as soon as I can. Um, but have a great rest of the afternoon. Um, oh, Keely, just in a question from you, does it affect your credit rating moving bank accounts? I've been with the same bank for 15 years. Yeah, so credit rating wise, um, when, you, when you apply for a starting bank, uh, any new account really, then yes, a credit score will be um, performed. So will it affect your credit rating? I mean, if anything, it's likely to improve your credit rating. Um, unless you've got a number of credit transactions that you've applied for, you know, in a short window of time. So generally speaking, you shouldn't really do more than two or three credit applications in one month because then it can reduce your rating rather than improve your rating. But if your rating is quite low by applying for credit, um, like a bank account, because you automatically get offered an overdraft facility, then that can improve your credit score. One thing that I would recommend if you haven't done so is, is to have a look at two things. One is there's an app that you can download called ClearScore. And I've actually written a blog post on this, which you can access on the website, um, which is themoneypanel.co.uk, um, where you can actually put in your personal details, your name and address, date of birth, etc. And it will tell you what your current credit score is like. And on the app, you can actually track how you can improve your credit score, different ways you can improve it. And also it will alert you when you're applying for new credit, which is a great for fraud prevention mechanism because, you know, in this day and age, we do occasionally get people applying for credit in our name. So it's a really good way to get on top of, um, you know, fraudulent activity going on under your name, you know, in the rare occasion that that does happen. So I would recommend that you download that particular app. If you've got a poor credit rating, then you can also go into Martin Lewis has um, a site called Money Saving Expert. And on there, they offer something called the Credit Club, which is completely free of charge. Again, you just plug in your personal details and it will allow you to assess your credit score, but it will also allow you to assess the eligibility and the likelihood of you being um, eligible to make an application for different types of bank accounts and credit cards or loans, for example, without you putting a footprint on your credit file. So if I log into mine, it will tell me that I've got a 95% chance of having X credit card. So I know before I even make that application that the likelihood is that I'll be accepted without leaving an actual physical footprint in my credit file. So those are two things that I'd recommend that you do in terms of, um, you know, first of all, understanding what state your credit rating is at, but then second of all, is this the right time to be considering switching or not? And um, so hopefully that answers your question, Keely. Um, any other questions, if you're listening on the replay, just pop hashtag replay in the bottom here, and then I will come back and answer any of your questions that you have um, once you've watched. Uh, thanks very much for joining, guys. Have a great afternoon and see you soon.